Jesus is our God. A sacred refuge is your name. Your kingdom is unshakable. With you forever we will reign. So we will set our hearts on you. Lord, we will set our hearts on you. A mighty fortress is our God. A sacred refuge is your name. Your kingdom is unshakable. With you forever we will reign. With you forever we will reign. Our God is a consuming fire. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good, good. King of my heart, be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song. Let the King of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days, oh, he is my song. You are good, good. Jesus Christ, 
who lives in me. You are stronger, you are stronger, sin is broken, you have saved me. It is risen, Christ is risen, Jesus, you are Lord of all. No beginning and no end. You're my hope and my defense. You came to see and save the lost. You paid it all upon the cross. You are stronger. You are stronger, sin is broken, you have saved me, it is written, Christ is risen, Jesus you are Lord of all. So let your name be lifted higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. your name be lifted higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. So let your name be lifted higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. You are stronger, you are stronger, sin is broken. Save me, it is written, Christ is risen, Jesus, you are Lord of all, Jesus, you are Lord of all. We crown you with adoration, enthrone you upon our praises. You are the King, and you have captured our hearts again. We join with the angels' chorus, for we know our God is for us. You are the King, and you have captured our hearts again. The only true and living God. The only true And you have captured our hearts again We join with the angels' chorus For we know our God is for us You are the King And you have captured our hearts again We crown you with adoration Enthrone you upon our praises you are the King, and you have captured our hearts again. We join with the angels' chorus, for we know our God is for us. You are the King, and you have captured our hearts again.
Well, life on the farm is kind of laid back Ain't much an old country boy like me can't hack Early to rise, early in the sack Thank God I'm a country boy Well, a simple kind of life never did me no harm Raising me a family and working on a farm Days are all filled with an easy country charm Thank God I'm a country boy Well, I got me a fine wife, I got me old fiddle What do ducks eat at their soup? What? Quackers chicken do jumping jacks because it wanted scrambled eggs. <laughs> the old fiddle when the sun's coming up, I got cakes on the griddle. Life ain't nothing but a funny, funny riddle. Yeah! Thank God I'm a country boy. morning we're gonna sing about him we're gonna sing to him we're gonna sing for him we're gonna uplift his name and in doing so hopefully we will uplift each other as well let's stand together as we worship all hail the power of Jesus
Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever.
morning, church. The last few weeks, we have been talking about worship in our assemblies. And as we continue worshiping today, I want to share just a brief thought about worship. Worshiping God is something that we do not want to take lightly. And gathering as a church is a very important part of that. Thanking God really is at the core of what we are doing. We want to honor Him. We want to please Him because He is amazing. We don't ever want to sell our family short. We don't ever want to sell our jobs short. We don't want to sell celebrity short if we came into contact with them. And we certainly don't want to sell God short when we come to worship. We want to truly worship Him so we try to give him our very best. As a church, we want to sound our best and we want to sing songs that speak of his goodness. We don't just sing any old song that sounds good. We want to sing songs that are based on scripture and just in truth. We don't sing pop songs, but you will be amazed to find out that Amazing Grace fits perfectly into the Eagles song, I Have a Peaceful, Easy Feeling. So check it out sometime. <laughs> But really, worship needs to be beautiful because God deserves something beautiful because He is amazing. We want to offer our very best to say, thank you, God. You are worthy. We truly worship you. But if we only think of worship as singing at church, we have a very narrow view of what worshiping the Creator of life actually is. And God has some choice words in Isaiah that I'm going to read in a second. And he's a little upset with the Israelites. He says in Isaiah 1, 13 through 17, this is God to the Israelites. Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. New moons, Sabbaths, and convocations. I cannot bear your worthless assemblies. Your new moon feasts and your appointed festivals I hate with all my being. They've become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I hide my eyes from you. Even when you offer many prayers, I am not listening. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourself clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong and learn to do right. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. God's pretty upset. And in many ways, what he's saying is, if you acknowledge me and if you want to worship me, have a life that looks like it. And I think for us, that is such a good reminder that worshiping God isn't just these two hours on Sunday and then one hour on Wednesday. It's to have a life that is pointed towards him. True worship is to obey God. It's funny whenever you consider celebrity endorsements or commercials. Just about every commercial is this. Hey, you like this person. They use this product. So should you. And it works marvelously. One of the most famous advertisement campaigns ever in American culture is the Got Milk milk campaign. Milk campaign. And it's just celebrities drinking milk and having a, a milk mustache. It's been going since 1993, and it's still going. And the funny thing is, is that we have always known that milk is healthy. But whenever you see Shaquille O'Neal and his mom have milk on their mustaches, then it's like, hey, let's drink some milk. They, they did it, it's good enough for me too. We listen to celebrities whenever they aren't even known for their wise words. They aren't known for loving us. They aren't known for even, maybe even living a good life. We just like their smiles. We like their talents. We have so many reasons to actually listen to God and to obey Him. He loves us. He created all things. He has shown Himself in amazing ways time and time again in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, and most importantly, He sent His Son to die on the cross for our sins. The best way to respect God, the best way to acknowledge Him, the best way to worship Him is to do what He says and to obey Him. Jesus says in John 8, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. John 14, he says, if you love me, keep my commands. We want so badly, and we're expecting to just see God in the big miracle moments. But truth is, is that he's offering his goodness to us every single day to just walk with us when we obey him. 
So if true worship is to obey him, I think it has a pretty meaningful context for what the church does when we gather together. We gather to join God as a church in what he is doing. God uses his church and his people in wonderful ways, but he is still the main star. We are dependent on him. Humans, we do not change hearts. God does. Humans, we do not, we have not been around for eternity. God has. We do not know the future. God does. We can choose to obey him and join him and thrive, or we can suffer the consequences of sinning against each other and ultimately God himself. So meeting together again is very important, and we want it to be the very best it can. But church worship really should be more about submitting to him rather than to showing to him. He does not need our worship. True worship is more about godly activity instead of human creativity. I'm going to say that again. True worship is more about godly activity than it is human creativity. It's about what he's doing rather than what we are doing. When it's all about exciting new things, we're really more so worshiping entertainment instead of God, and in some ways, worshiping ourselves. When we worship God, we do not sway him, we do not change him. When we worship God, he changes us, he forms us, he moves us. And I don't know how many times in my darkest moments and hardest times, I think of the songs that I sang growing up. I think of the sermons that happened. I cherish each time we come together around the Lord's table. In closing, when we worship him daily and join him in what he is doing, it's easier for us to believe and to see that what he has in mind may not be what we want for ourselves or this church, but it's going to be better than anything we can fathom. We begin to actually trust him when we worship. I'm going to close with Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. So as we continue singing, let's sing with gusto, let's sing with passion, but let's remember that worship, true worship, is to obey him and to join him in what he's doing instead of just our efforts. Let's keep singing. The holy, holy Lord God
What a great day to worship our Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. And we take this time now to commune together and remember Jesus and the sacrifice and resurrection he had and the promise found in that sacrifice. But for me growing up, sacrifice was always a rather difficult concept to wrap my head around. I couldn't understand why it played such a large role in our spiritual life. Why, life, or why death was necessary for life to continue. So I take a step back and I look at this beautiful creation God has made. Everything he has created to sustain us in this lifetime. And I come to verses like Genesis 1.29 that states, And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. He continues this thought in Genesis 9.3 when he says, Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. And as I gave you the green plants, I give you everything. It's then I realize sacrifice has always been essential for life. See, it doesn't really matter where you fall in the spectrum of living things on this planet. Whether you're an insect, a plant, fungi, animal, human, we all share a common characteristic, which is we have to consume nutrients from the sacrifice of another living thing in order to sustain ourselves. So when addressing a concept like eternal life, it only makes sense that there would have to be a sacrifice to sustain that eternal life. Jesus was and is that living sacrifice. He was the life given to provide the nourishment our soul needs for an eternity beside him and our Father in heaven. See, John 6, 32 through 40 reads as follows. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. See, Jesus was willing to be faithful to God's will all the way to death. He understood and knew that he was the nourishment needed to sustain the world as we progress into our next life. He was willing to take a physical act that had massive spiritual implications. And it's at this time we too are partaking in a physical act with massive spiritual implications. We recognize God is who has provided the nourishment needed to sustain our earthly lives. And we consume this bread and fruit of the vine, symbolizing Christ's body and blood shed for us, knowing that he will be the nourishment to sustain us into eternity. This act of communion is our gift. It is our blessing. It is one of the physical acts we partake in to consume the spiritual nourishment our soul needs to be sustained with him forever. So thank you, God, for this gift, for this blessing, for this opportunity to live out the will you have for us and to remember the sacrifice, resurrection, ascension, and promise your son has given us. Will you go with me to our Father in prayer? Lord, we come to you humbling ourselves recognizing all you are as our sustainer, our creator. We thank you for the blessings you continually pour out upon us. Lord, I pray at this time you don't let us become complacent in our actions or in our thoughts, but recognize 
just how glorious this opportunity is. I pray that you bless this bread so it nourishes our body and our soul. I pray that you give us the courage to always look to you in times of need. We bring to you this prayer in your holy son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you go back to me with our Father in prayer. Lord, again, we come to you humbling ourselves, thanking you for the opportunity to come to a church like this and be able to worship your majesty and your grace and your perfectness. Lord, we know that there are so many brothers and sisters throughout the world right now that don't have this luxury, that don't have the opportunity to openly proclaim you are king. There are many across the world that are losing their lives, being faithful to your will to death. Lord, again, we pray that you bless this cup so that it can nourish our body and our soul. We thank you for the promise that is given in Christ and the willingness he had to take on the sins of the world so that we can come to you as pure white sheep. We pray that your hand of comfort and strength and support surrounds our brothers and sisters around the world who are struggling right now. Give us the confidence to reach out and do all we can to support them in any way possible. Lord, thank you truly for all you give to us. And again, in your holy son's name, Jesus Christ, we send this prayer. Amen. Bye. 
Good morning. Uh, there's part of me that wishes I could just surrender the rest of my time uh, to Stephen. Uh, or let's get Morgan back up here. Um, or get Kevin back up here. This has been a really excellent, excellent morning. Um, and I, I look at, at this simple question that I want to ask each of you. How was worship this morning? Um, here's what's tricky, though. Um, I ask that question because oftentimes this is one of those questions that we ask each other after worship takes place. How was worship? And let's think through how we answer this question of how was worship? Do we agree that's like a common question after we close things out, we walk out of here, was how was worship for you is maybe more accurate. Uh, well, I just told you how it was for me. I, I quite enjoyed it. I thought the songs were great. I thought Morgan did an excellent job. I thought Kevin did an excellent job. I felt that I felt close to God. I felt like it was a good time. But you know what? Now that I think about it, maybe we stood up a little too much. Maybe we didn't stand stand up enough. Or maybe the frequency was right, but we stood up for too long. Right? Or maybe the songs were great, but the pacing could have been better. Uh, The lighting in here, goodness. I was distracted. Uh, it, was, it was really, really good until that baby started crying. Sorry, because that could have, could have been my baby. That baby was crying and I got distracted, so worship was, uh, it was okay this morning. How was worship this morning? And how do you answer that question? Because that question is wildly, wildly important. But more so, the way that you answer it. Let's stop and define what worship is supposed to be. I found this very simple definition for worship, to acknowledge God. I like definitions that are, that are short, that you can remember, that you can speak into, but I think we can all put it out there that, like, this fits, this is good, this is what worship is, to acknowledge God. We acknowledge who he is, what he's done, his role in our lives, But in many ways, this is what we do to worship, and this is what Kevin talked about this morning. I also see acknowledge as like a, you tip the cap and you move on. Like, hey, I'll take just a minute, God, to acknowledge you. It's Sunday morning. We do this all the time. Let me acknowledge you and tip my cap to you real quick. But that's enough for me. How is worship for you this morning? How do you define worship? As Kevin very admirably put it. It is to obey God. It's not just an acknowledgement of who he is, although that's part of it. You obey God because you acknowledge who he is in your life. I want to point you to a scripture this morning from Revelation. You didn't think we were going there this morning. We're going there. Uh, This passage is interesting. Um, It's to the church in Ephesus, Kevin uh, read to us a passage from the book of Ephesians. Let's talk more about that church in Ephesus. God's word says this, I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance, and how you cannot bear with those who are evil, but have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not, and found them to be false. I know you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my name's sake, and you have not grown weary. But, there's always a but. I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. I want to challenge you this morning because this challenges me. It's not enough to just heartlessly obey God. It's not enough to go through the motions and say, yep, I've covered my bases. I came to church this morning. I acknowledge who God is. I obey him during the week. We're solid. We're good. A lot of marriages fall apart for that very reason. You go through the motions. You do the things you're supposed to do. But there's something missing. You go seek that out somewhere else, and then marriages fall apart. This happens in friendships. It happens with your work because you, you do your work, you go show up on time, you do all the things you're supposed to do, something's missing, you get tired, you get in a rut, and you quit or you do bad work. But this is exactly what happens with our relationship with God. 
is not enough to just go through the motions. That's not worship. You could hit every single note in one of the more difficult songs you could think of here in worship, and you could sound great, and you still missed the mark. Growing up, if I had a nickel for every time my dad said this, uh, I would have very full pockets of nickels. My dad always said, son, when you decide that you found the person you think you want to marry, you need two things, head and heart. you got to have both. And my dad would tell me these, these little anecdotes. This sounds like my dad's ladies, man. Those of you who know my dad, Lowell Pew, not so much a ladies, man. But he would tell me these stories of uh, girls that he had dated where he might have one, but not both. There would be a girl that family liked, her family liked him, everybody got along, she made sense on paper, checked all the boxes, that's great, but this wasn't there. And that was a problem, and so it didn't work out. Or maybe it's the other way around. The heart's there, right? You fall for this person, you're so excited, it's great, it's amazing, but nothing about it makes any lick of sense. When it comes to worship, God wants both of these things from you. He wants both. He doesn't just want your head where you're you know, going through the motions and you're doing the things and you're obeying him in your life and you think you've got it all covered. He wants your heart too. But it's not enough to just say, well, I love God and do whatever you want. That's not how worship works either. You've got to have both. This cautionary tale in Revelation is, is pretty powerful to me because uh, although it be written so long ago, I, I feel like it describes me so often. Where I look at this, this passage and it steps on my toes when I'm like, man, I'm, I'm a minister and I, I check a lot of boxes most of the time. But if I do a, a quick heart check... Because worship, as Kevin said this morning, is not two to three hours a week at designated times. It is a lifestyle. It is you positioned toward Christ and letting him work on you. It is a relationship that supersedes marriage, work, friendship, family, you name it. And God wants your head and your heart. He wants both. So, I'm going to try to land the plane. Um, I had to ask Lisa Kelly this morning if I'm authorized to do this, just as a youth minister. But uh, here's what I'm going to do. We're going to do a classic. We're going to have a time where we stand up and we worship, we sing a song, and you have an opportunity to come down and talk to an elder. And if there's something that is wrong or something that you want to change or you want to discuss or if you're ready to get baptized, all that jazz, you can do that. Here's the trick, is when we talk about worship and I say that it's not two to three hours a week, this is not your only opportunity to turn your life around. This is not the only time that you have to go to someone and say, my head's not in this, or my heart's not in this. It is not your only opportunity to go to Christ and say, I gotta change. I grew up in the Church of Christ, and I had moments where I was, thought I was ready to be baptized, and we'd already be on verse 3 of the invitation song, and I'm like, well, I've missed my opportunity. Maybe next week. Your opportunity to come back is not limited to a few verses of a song on a Sunday morning, because worship is not three hours a week. So... If you do want to have that time where you stand up and you come forward, we're about to have that. But please hear me. God wants your head and your heart, and he is not just available three hours a week. If you do have a need, you can come now as we stand up and sing. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on.
Good morning and amen to Kevin's, Morgan. Awesome job, guys. Um, this morning we have uh, Kelly Benefield and Baker and Bowen. I believe that's Bowen. I hope I'm saying that right. Bowen are here this morning. Kelly, could we please get you to stand if you're here? There you are, right over there. There she is. She wants to play some membership with us this morning. That is awesome. Thank you, Kelly, for placing your faith in us. And I know you got a good friend there beside you, Tabitha. Uh, so thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, uh, Joe Velez comes this morning asking for your prayers. As you know, Joe recently and, and his sweet bride, they've lost, a, they lost their son-in-law. And uh, Joe just asked for prayers this morning. He said, I just had a really hard time getting up and coming in this morning. So uh, that's understandable. And we just want to uh, lift them up in prayer right now. Uh, we know others that are hurting uh, from loss. Uh, uh, that, that's just a tough thing to go through, and we're just going to pray for Joe right now. Father God, we, uh, we lift Joe and his sweet bride up this morning and their family as they are suffering they're hurting, dear God. Uh, they're just really down right now, and it's just a tough time, and understandably so, dear God. And you know, we're gonna, we all know we go through peaks and valleys, dear God, and you're always there in those valleys. Sometimes we just uh, are so distracted by what's going on in our life that we forget that. And we just ask you to help Joe and his family to remember that you are right there with them, holding them up, walking right beside them, carrying them at times. And that's probably what's going on right now, dear God. There's some carrying going on. And we just appreciate Joe and his family and their love for you and their service to you, their example to us, dear God. We just ask you to be with them, put your hand on them, comfort them at this time. And for others, dear God, that are hurting also for loss in their families and friends. Um, these are different days, dear God. Sometimes this gets pretty difficult. We just need to remember that you have this and that uh, we can trust in you always, unfailing, uh, never-ending. Thank you for sending Jesus to save us, dear God, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. Yeah, I also want to thank the worship committee for all the time they've spent praying and planning and organizing the Sunday morning worship. Many of you may not be aware of it, but we actually have members who volunteer to meet each week. 
And what they're trying to do is they're trying to figure out how we can all better communicate God's glory, his majesty, his characteristics, his grace, and really the most amazing fact that all, of all that he wants to have a relationship with each one of us. You know, if you think about it, worship flourishes when we really know who we are and we know who God is and we see how massive that gap is and how Jesus is the one that fills it. So coming here on Sunday, we, we don't want it to become a ritual or a habit, and we've got to kind of fight against that, right? It's kind of hard. Instead, we want it to be a time when we can remember who God is, we can encourage each other to seek him, and that we can recharge, and then when we go out during the week, we can continue to worship during our everyday lives. We're going to have a couple of elders available if anybody needs prayers. And this week we're going to put them in that little room, the conference room down the hallway there to the left. If anybody needs a prayer, if anybody has questions, feel free to go to them. Thank you. Stand together and sing one more song. Salvation belongs to our God. from the book of Ephesians, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is in, at work within us. To him be glory in the church, and as Kevin reminded us, not the church building alone, but in us. We are the church, and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. And the church said, Amen. go worship, go shine your light, Go get some coffee. Have a great week. <laughs>